Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, August 9th. So the moon is in Libra and energy here again all day, and it will be up until 546 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is when the moon is going to go void, of course. But we're not locking into Scorpio energy until 635 p.m here on Saturday, August 10th. That is a huge window where the moon is void. We very much do not like that for ourselves. When the moon is void, things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain. I think we've had enough of that. And of course, coming out of indecisive Libra energy, and as we're preparing to do the deep dive into Scorpio energy, you best believe that this void, of course, is not going to feel good. However, we do have the bulk of the day with the moon in a direct position, an unwavered position, and we are definitely making up for the agitation, for the frustration that many of us experienced yesterday under the non-Lion's Gate portal. I said what I said. Anywho, there are six different aspects taking place here today. All six are going to involve the moon, which means that this is the second moon day in a row. This is a time for emotional refinement. And in this Libra energy, we're looking for balance in our emotions, especially between our heart and our head. That activation with the South Node yesterday threw us back into the past on top of Mercury's retrograde, taking a good look at some relationships that for some reason started appealing to us when we fought so hard to collapse them, to close the door on them, to create some boundaries around them. That's okay. The South Node needs to throw us back into what it is that we fought our way away from in order to remind us how far we've actually come, how much stronger we actually are with putting our own wants, needs, and de desires at the top of the list instead of, again, playing small and putting everybody else before ourselves. So we jump into the day, the moon in Libra and energy going to make an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. What do they have in common? Libra energy, Taurus energy, Venus as their ruler. Where is Venus? You may ask. That is right. She is in Virgo energy. She's in Virgo energy, sitting pretty close with Mercury in his rulership in Virgo energy, who happens to be retrograde. This is why we're analyzing the past relationship dynamics. The moon interacting with Uranus is giving us a jolt of energy to snap us out of the funk that we were sitting in yesterday. This is going to open up our heart space, open up our mind space, put us in a better mood, better attitude, better perspective, better demeanor to see where it is that guess what? We're tired of this back and forth and we really want stability. But in order to get stability, we have to make a sudden change. Why? Because doing what it is that we've been doing, that's what got us what it is that we've already got. We want something different. Therefore, we have to do different. Therefore, we have to think different in order to actually make the change. The moon is then going to trine Mars. Mars is the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. And Mars is in Gemini energy, the twins. Two choices, two decisions, and in this case, certain interests from the past versus certain interests now that we're percolating on for our future selves. Now, a trine is a good interaction. It's, it's taking place because Libra and energy is an air energy as well as Gemini energy is an air energy. And this is a gentle nudge in the right direction. We are in a better mood, at a better attitude. We are bossing up. We're seeing that warrior mood and attitude come back in order for us to stay motivated, to stay determined, to not look back, to not go back, and instead blaze a brand new path moving forward. The moon is going to trine Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, the wisdom that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons. He's also in Gemini energy, Mars and Jupiter working very closely together in this Gemini energy. Again, air on air action. Now we're thinking about the future. We're optimistic. We're super confident. We are kind of overriding the last couple of days of that negative narrative. And we are starting to really see where we have the opportunity to grow, to evolve past the point that many of us have been feeling pretty stuck in essentially since the new moon in Leo. 
The moon is then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with the sun. So the sun shining very brightly in Leo energy, the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction is going to be a new level of awareness, a new aha moment on our wants, our needs, our desires. A sextile is helping us grow with ease. And basically what we're getting here is the courage, is the bravery, is the boldness of that Leo energy that the sun is shining very brightly in, in order to abandon that old people pleasing version of self that got ourselves in some bad relationship dynamics that had us doing some wackadoodle things just for other people to like us, to love us, to accept us. We're not doing that anymore. We're bossing up. We're moving on. This is the point in time though, that the moon is going to go void of course. So again, 5 46 PM, things are going to start feeling weird. 6.25 p.m. The moon is going to make a very tough interaction with Saturn. Here is where the instability is going to go into extremes. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, boundaries. He's retrograde in Pisces energy, deconstructing the old ways of doing things, the old ways of standing up for ourselves, the old ways where we maybe didn't stand up for ourselves because we lacked boundaries. We lacked the belief system that we could be loved and we could be deserving and worthy without sacrificing our own wants, needs, and desires for the people, for the world around us. We're closing a karmic chapter. The moon interacting with Saturn is going to bring some heaviness, going to bring some weight. It's going to make us feel like a negative Nancy for a moment, and it's going to put the weight of the world on our shoulders. It is especially going to trigger our heart space. Go ahead, listen to the Ascension forecast for this week to understand all of the energetic physical manifestations that pop off with some of these energy shifts. The moon is then going to semi-square Mercury. So this is the last fact, last aspect of the day. And of course, the moon is our heart space and Mercury is our head space, but Mercury is retrograde. So we're looking back and he's in his rulership and Virgo energy, which means that we're picking things apart. We're dissecting things. We're replaying certain situations and circumstances in our mind. We're focused on the problem. We're focused on where it is that we were challenged, where it is that we spoke words that got anchored into the physical world in order to create boundaries that now we have to stand up to and abide by instead of going back on. The moon and Mercury, our heart, our head, they're not on the same page. Why? Because the moon in Libra wants everyone to be happy, wants everybody to be having a good time, even at the detriment of ourselves. This is where the codependent relationship dynamics need to fall apart. This is where the people pleasing qualities need to fall apart. The nodes of the moon on this Aries and Libra and axis. We have to stop sacrificing our own light, our own wants, needs, and desires in order to make other people happy. We have to stand in our own power. And Mercury, who of course is retrograde, looking back, reflecting, dissecting, analyzing, reevaluating, replaying, reprocessing in Virgo energy, we don't really care about other people's. We're looking at the matter of facts and the matter of facts are we were put in a situation to choose someone else or to choose ourselves and we chose ourselves and now we feel like the bad guy for doing that, but we shouldn't because we are more in our power today than we've ever been. It just doesn't feel good because we're doing something different. We're doing something new. We're doing something that does not feel safe and secure because it is not familiar. We're going to get there, but we can't run back to the things that we fought so hard to grow away from. So this particular interaction may be messing with our heads, may create a little bit of a discord between our heart and head. And then between our head and our mouths, Mercury is retrograde. There are misunderstandings. There are miscommunications. We are really seeing things in a skewed perception, a skewed perspective. This is why we have to analyze it, that Virgo energy, helping us to break it down, pick it apart, see it from a different lens so that we can see both sides of the coin so that we can choose very carefully and clearly what it is that we are not going back to and what it is that we now want to start making a little bit more progress towards.